Hi, this is Rick Rise from HighDefColor.com. Today we're going to talk about the conversion from the RGB color space into the CMYK color space. RGB is an additive color space, meaning that red, green, and blue light together will create white. When red, green, and blue light are off, they will be black, and it is projected onto a screen or onto a monitor. CMYK is the subtractive color theory, meaning that the cyan, magenta, and yellow inks act as filters. As light bounces off of the paper, it reflects up through the cyan, magenta, and yellow inks, which in turn will either absorb or reflect different color wavelengths. So the opposite of red is cyan, the opposite of green is magenta, and the opposite of blue is yellow. So the subtractive colors are the gray components of the additive colors, meaning that when they're put together, they create gray or black or white. So the lab color model, let me turn this off here. The lab color model is a three axis color system, and the lab colors are absolute, meaning that the color is identical. It's a, across a what's called a device independent, meaning that the lab color space is the only way for you to communicate different colors across different devices. Now, it is a, a three-axis system. The first axis, the L channel, or lightness, goes up and down the 3D color model, and it consists of white to black, and all of your gray colors will be exactly right down the center. So all your neutral colors will be relatively in the center of this axis. The A axis goes from a cyan blue color across to a magenta red color and the B axis goes from blue to yellow. So within this area we're going to plot our visual or reproducible colors based on the gamut or the profile of the device we have. So I'm going to turn on the sRGB color profile which uh, most monitors will display in sRGB, and sRGB is preferred for any type of internet or, or, or web uh, application. And uh, we'll get this thing spinning here. And you can see the volume of the colors that you can reproduce from this additive color model. Obviously, since it's dealing with projecting light, they're very bright colors, and they're very saturated. Now, when we bring in and display the... CMYK Grackle color profile, you'll notice when I turn it on that it pretty much is, uh, <laughs> the sRGB encompasses the whole CMYK color gamut besides this area of cyan and greens through here. And if you look down on the color model, you'll notice that the circumference of the model is projected along the bottom here. And you can see the outside perimeter of the sRGB color profile there's more of the brighter colors are just not capable of being, re being reproduced with the CMYK color gamut. So you can see what happens when you get these real dark blues, there's no blue for you to hit in the CMYK color model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our sRGB color profile and I'm going to change the opacity so you can see the difference that we're dealing with here. <clears throat> so as you can see, <clears throat> the volume of color with uh, on the RGB color profile is nowhere near what's being able to reproduce in the CMYK color profile. So what we have to do is we have to do our best job of remapping these colors or what is known as tonal compression to bring this sRGB color model into the CMYK color space. This is why, I'll stop right here, when you look at a blue sky you may always be uh, disappointed with the results you get because with uh, when the photograph is in SRG or in RGB, you've got all these deep bright blues and, and, and more of the, the colors you see in the in the horizon that when they're converted to CMYK, you'll notice when I change the opacity, all those bright blues have to be condensed into this little area here of the uh, of the blue hue that's reproducible in CMYK. So there's a sacrifice there. And that's where you get into using either the relative uh, rendering intent or the perceptual color intent. That'll help you resolve some of that, uh, some of the issues you have with converting your dark blues into the CMYK color space. So let's turn this uh, 
opacity back up and you'll get an idea again of what we're dealing with here. We need to take all this color and condense it into this little area right here. So, and this is the Grackle color profile. The Grackle color profile has more colors than the SWAT profile. So we're going to get uh, a better representation of some of those more juicier RGB colors when they're converted to CMYK. So let's bring this up again and, and, and again show you the difference of converting all of this into this little area here. And this is why color management is, is so important and to know what profiles you're dealing with. So your safest bet is, is, is using the sRGB color space and converting into the coded Grackle profile. Keep in mind that dealing with your print provider, they will pr produce or they'll provide the correct color profile based on their printing condition. So a profile is a, a recipe or the characteristics of a particular printing condition. So based on the press, the inks, and the paper that they use will produce a profile. Well, thanks again for tuning in. I hope this kind of clears some things up. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment on the blog, and we will see you next time. Have a great day.